rep representing Israel. He said, when Ephraim, one of Joseph's, that's the name of one of his sons, he said, when Ephraim spake trembling, when he feared God, what did he do? He exalted himself in Israel. But go ahead. But when he offended in Baal, he died. But he started that false worship. But he stopped fearing the Lord. He said, when he spake trembling, he exalted himself in Israel. When he humbled himself, then the Lord exalted him. He said, but when he offended in Baal and false worship, he said, then he died. Go ahead. And now they sin more and more. And have done what? And have made them molten images of their sin. Uh -huh. And idols according to their own understanding. Go ahead. All of it the work of the craftsmen. They say of them, let the men that sacrifice kiss the cat. What's going to happen? Therefore, it is real. Go ahead. Therefore they shall be as the morning clock. They're going to be gone. Go ahead. And as the early dew that passeth away. Go ahead. As the chain that is driven with the whirlwind out of the floor. Just like some dust. When you blow on it. It's going to be gone. Go ahead. And as the smoke out of the chimney. Israel as a nation is to disappear. God sent them into captivity. Turn to 2 Kings. The 17th chapter. Because we're going to read about Oshia. The last king of Israel. Israel's last king of the northern tribe. We're going to see what happened to him. And at this time, Israel, as a people, have been in the land for over 600 years. Because they were there roughly 400 years before a king ruled over them. They were ruled by the judges. And the first king to rule was Saul, followed by David, and then Saul. As I say, because Solomon sinned against God, he split the nation into two. This is the northern kingdom. What's going to happen to them? 17. I tell you what, pick it up. Pick it up at verse number one. 17 and one, what does it say? In the twelfth year of Ahaz, king of Judah, began Hosea, the son of Eli. Go ahead. To reign in Samaria over Israel nine years. And again. This is the last king of Israel. Not picking up at verse number six. Go ahead. In the ninth year of Hosea, the king of Assyria took Samaria. Uh huh. Carried Israel away into Assyria. Go ahead. Placed him in Halah and in Hebor by the river of Gozer. Just like the morning cloud. Just like the morning dew. Just like the, the dust that's thrown on the floor. They're going to disappear. They're going to be gone. He said, in the ninth year of Hoshea, he said, the king of Assyria took Samaria and carried away Israel, away into Assyria. They became known as the, the ten lost tribes of Israel. And what did he do? Placed them in Allah and in Habor by the river of Gosen and in the cities of the Medes. For so it was the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God. Go ahead. And who did they sin against? It had to be Jesus. The Father? Nobody see his shape nor heard his voice at any time. It said, for so it was that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God. And again, God is long-suffering. He's patient. But there's a price to be paid. He said, for so it was that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God. Go ahead. Which had brought them up out of the land of Egypt. Uh -huh. From under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And had feared other gods. What was the first thing he told them? What was the first commandment he said? Have no other gods before me. Go ahead. Hey. And walked in the statutes of the heathen. Uh -huh. Whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel. Go ahead. And of the kings of Israel, which they had made. And that showed that Israel was a stiff-necked, hard-headed people, and they weren't too bright. Why would you worship the gods of the people who the true and living God had destroyed? Why are you going to follow the false gods? They couldn't pro God didn't protect them. And Israel had been delivered from bondage from Egypt. And then they start worshiping the gods of the Canaanites and the Hittites. The gods of these people that had been in the land of Canaan. They start worshiping these false gods. 
God said, don't do that. He said, they walked in the statutes of the heathen, just to simply mean the nations whom the Lord cast out. Seven nations that was greater than Israel. He said, he had cast out from before the children of Israel and of the kings of Israel, which they had made. Drop down to verse 7 and go ahead. And there they burn incense in all the high places. Our places of worship. Go ahead. As did the heathen whom the Lord carried away before them. Uh-huh. And brought wicked things to provoke the Lord to anger. Go ahead. For they served idols. Uh-huh. And all the Lord had said unto them. What? You shall not do this thing. Go ahead. And the Lord testified against Israel and against you. Uh-huh. By all the prophets and by all the seers. He warned them. The prophets warn, go ahead, say, turn ye from your evil way. And do what? And keep my commandments. Look here, that's the fundamental principle that you can find in this body. People always want to know the deep things of God. You don't get no deeper than that. Because if you don't understand that, if you don't grab some hold or lay hold of that, all of the prophecy, you can know all prophecy, and it ain't going to do you no good. If you don't understand this, I gotta obey God. But I gotta obey Him, not according to man's commandments. I gotta obey Him according to what's written in this book. The Lord sent His prophets to warn the people. That's what a watchman does. It's to warn the people about the sword that's gonna come down on the land, so that you can get out of the way, so that you can deliver yourself. The word of God is inspiring. It's inspiring in knowing, always oh, say, I can look at the wickedness of this world and I know what the end is going to be. I can look at my challenges in life and I know what the end is going to be. That's what sustains me. That's what keeps me. I'm thankful for that. I'm inspired even though I know it's terrible times that await us ahead. Terrible times. Knowing, asking to be here when the Lord comes, I know the drama that one has to go through. The carnage that one is going to be witness to. The destruction that's going to be all around. And I mean all around. But at the same time, that's what inspires me. Because I know that this is real. And I know that God does not change. He is a consistent God. I can trust in him because of that. What he says, he will not change. And I know that if I obey him to the best of my ability, that he is born to deliver me. That's all you have. You have to keep his commandments. But go ahead. He said he, he said he, the Lord testified against Israel and against Judah by all the prophets and by all the seers saying, turn ye from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes. Go ahead. According to all the law which I commanded your father. Uh -huh. And which I sent to you by my service, the prophets. Go ahead. Notwithstanding, they would not hear. Uh -huh. But harden their necks. Go ahead. Like to the neck of their fathers that did not believe in the Lord their God. God's a merciful God. He didn't send one prophet. He sent prophet after prophet after prophet. And you can read where Israel abused the prophet. Beat some, stone some, kill some. And the Lord kept sinning. Go ahead. 15. And they rejected his statutes uh -huh. and his covenant that he made with their father. Go ahead. And, he te and his testimonies which he testified against them. But who they rejected was none other than Jesus. Just like they rejected Solomon's Satan. Ain't nothing new under the sun. Just like people reject Jesus today, they always rejected God. Ain't nothing new. That's why he said he was in the world, and the world knew him not. He came into his own, and his own received him not. Don't nobody want to obey God. But I'm not concerned about what don't nobody else want to do. It's your choice. It's what you want to do. Go ahead. And they followed vanity uh -huh. and became vain. 
and went after the heathen that were around about them. Go ahead. Concerning whom the Lord had charged them that they should not do like them. And what did they do? And they left all the commandments of the Lord their God. Uh huh. Made them molten images, even two calves. Go ahead. And made a grove and worshipped all the hosts of heaven and served Baal. They got steeped in idolatry. And drop down to verse number 18 and go ahead. Therefore the Lord was very angry with Israel uh -huh. and removed them out of his sight. Go ahead. There was none left but the tribe of Judah only. So Jesus set them into captivity. As I said, they're, they're known as the ten lost tribes of Israel. And you will have people say, well, I know who they are. No, you don't. They lost. Right. That's just like saying, uh, you know, I lost something. And then turn around and say, well, I know where it is. But then if you know where it is, it ain't lost. Go ahead, drop down to verse number 19. Thank you. Also Judah kept not the commandments of the Lord their God. But did what? And walked in the statutes of Israel which they now, made. Now you saw what happened to the northern kingdom. Mm -hmm. The ten tribe. And that didn't make them repent. They kept right on what they foolish. They say also Judah kept not the commandments of the Lord their God. But walked in the statutes of Israel which they made. And the Lord eventually got rid of them. But go ahead, verse number 20. And the Lord rejected all the seed of Israel. Because he kept them around long enough because Jesus had to come on the scene. But I ain't dealing with that. Verse 20, go ahead. He said, and the Lord rejected all the seed of Israel and did what? And afflicted them. Go ahead. And delivered them into the hand of sport. Tell we. Until he had cast them out of his sight. Israel went into slave. But they're going to remain until the second coming of the Lord. Turn over. Not turn to Judah. We're going to further see God does not change. He showed us with Adam. He showed us with the nation of Israel, his chosen people. you got to be obedient unto him and you're going to suffer the consequences. Go get the same message here in June. June 1 at verse number 5. June 1, June, June 1 and 5. Go ahead when you get there. I will therefore put in your remembrance, though ye once knew this. Go ahead. How that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt. What did he do? Afterward destroyed them that believed not. Oh, he had delivered them from the Egyptians. And then all those 20 years old and up died in the wilderness. And what Jude is warning people, you're not saved. But I didn't come here for that. He said, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this. I that the Lord having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, delivered them from bondage. He said, afterward destroyed them that believed not. This is none other than Jesus. But verse number six, go ahead. What else did the Lord, what else had the Lord done? Go ahead. And the angels which kept not their first to stay. But go ahead. And left their own habitation. What has he done? He hath reserved an everlasting change in the darkness unto the judgment and of the great day. So even the angels are awaiting their punishment. Because of their disobedience. Turn on the Matthew. The 25th chapter. Because we're going to see what's going to happen to them. Twenty-five. And pick it up at verse number 31. This is Jesus telling us what's going to take place when he makes his second come. Twenty-five and verse 31. You go ahead when you get there. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, uh -huh. and all the holy angels with him, go ahead. then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. He's telling you he's coming back to establish his kingdom here on this earth. That's why he say, pray, thy kingdom come. Go ahead. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, mm -hmm. as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goat. Go ahead. What is he going to do with the sheep? And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, uh -huh. but the goats on the left. Go ahead. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, uh -huh. inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. So what the Lord is going to do when he gets back, he's going to establish his kingdom. And those that have been obedient unto him, we're going to see that clearly. Those are the ones that's going to get into his kingdom. It's going to be an everlasting kingdom. But drop down to verse number 41. Because the old, he said the sheep that are on his right hand, the Lord's going to say unto him, 
Come ye blessed of my Father. You inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. But what about the ones on the left? Go ahead. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, uh -huh. Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire. This is everlasting damnation. Everlasting fire, he said. But he said something else about that fire. What was that? Prepare for the devil and his angels. That's the judgment that awaits Satan and the angels that follow him. They would throw, you can read that in Revelation, the 12th chapter. The Lord had Michael and his angels throw Satan and his angels out of heaven. He cast them down to this earth where they're reserved in chains of darkness. And they are awaiting their punishment which is everlasting damnation, the lake of fire. And man that messed around ain't going to fall into that punishment. Because everybody that's ever been created is going to live again. When God created man, he created him in his likeness and in his image. He didn't create man with the intention of man dying. Man brought death <laughs> on the so you either going to live forever in God's kingdom or you're going to be in the lake of fire. That's the choice that the Lord is placing before us. Turn over to Matthew, the fifth chapter. Because he said he's gone. Those that are on his right hand, the sheep, they're going to inherit the kingdom. But those on the left, they're going to be thrown in the lake of fire that will prepare for Satan and his angels. Pick it up at Matthew 5 and verse number 17. Here Jesus warns, of, warns us of that same faith here. 5 and 17. What did he say? Ain't not that I have come to destroy the law. Go ahead. For the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Go ahead again. How could he come to ch and change anything that he had written? He said, think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. What had been written and established. He didn't come to destroy it. He came to fulfill it. The only thing he changed, he did away with the sacrificial law. But even that, it had already been established that he was going to do that by Daniel. Daniel said he was going to be cut off, but not for himself. And he was going to cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease. It had already been established Jesus was going to do that. He said, so don't think that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. I've come not to destroy, but to fulfill. Go ahead. But well, verily I say unto you, what? Till heaven and earth pass. One jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. And see, some of these slick ministers will say, see, Jesus came and fulfilled it. All you got to do is go to Zechariah and read when he's going to be king over this earth. Is he king over this earth? Then it ain't all been fulfilled. It's real simple. You don't have to be a biblical scholar, but you have to read. He's not fulfilled at all. He himself is going to tell you what he said. 19. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments. So now he said, think not that I've come to destroy the law of the prophets. I've not come to destroy but to fulfill. In verse 18, what he said? He okay. said, but truly I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one child and one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth are still here. So the law is still here. All that God is saying is still good until this day. It's still good. Verse 19. Go ahead. My mama said, go ahead. Whosoever, whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments. He, the whosoever he's talking about is Jew or Gentile. Go ahead. And shall teach men so. What? It's going to happen to him. He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. And he said, you're going to be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. And it's a heavenly kingdom. Not that you're going to 
be in heaven, it's going to be a heavenly kingdom here on this earth because God is going to be with men. He said, but the one that breaks these commandments and teach men to do so, they're going to be the least in the kingdom. Because what's the least in the kingdom? Right over. As he tells you in Luke, it's going to be a gulf between those in the kingdom and those in the fire. So if you ain't in the kingdom, you're going to be in the fire. Right. He said, so whosoever therefore shall break one of these leaves. And this is Jesus. And others will say, but see, he's a prophet. He, they will acknowledge, just say, he was a prophet. But then they, they really say he wasn't God. People believe what they want. Jesus, according to this Bible, He's the only God that matters enough. He said, if you break one of these least commandments and teach man so, he's going to be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But go ahead. But whosoever shall do and teach them, what? The same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Turn over to Matthew 19, chapter, because it's real simple. We're going to see what commandments you got to keep in order to get into his kingdom. What commandments is Jesus talking about? We're going to find out. He's talking about the same ones he gave in his Spirit. 19. Pick it up at verse number 16. Because I always say, this is, a, this is a question that was asked, and everybody should want to know the answer to this question. What he said. Because the young man approached Jesus, and he asked him something. What was that? And behold. One came and said unto him, uh -huh. Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? He understood that he was not saved. But what he wanted to know is, he also understood something else. He understood he had to do something for his deliverance. He said, what good thing shall I do that I, should, that I may have eternal life? What is it that I can do that I can lay hold on eternity? What did Jesus tell him? Go ahead. And he said unto him, uh -huh. Why callest thou me good? Go ahead. There is none good but one. Uh -huh. That is God. Again, he paid homage to the Father. But go ahead. But He's going to answer the question. Go ahead. But if thou wilt enter into life, what? Keep the commandment. Again, you got free will. You got a choice just like Adam. He said, but if you want to lay hold on eternal life, then keep the command." Go ahead. He said unto him, which uh -huh. Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder. Go ahead. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not steal. Go ahead. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And do what? And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Look, he gave him five of the Ten Commandments, one of what's known as the two great commandments. The other being, love God with all your heart, all your soul, with all your strength, with all your might, all your mind. You love your neighbors, you love yourself. He's saying if you do these things, that's how you get eternal life. But people are taught that the commandments of God has been done away with. You ain't got to have no more. You ain't got to have no works. When people take away and what works is, what constitutes your works is your obedience to God's commandments. Right. And when ministers take that away, what they are doing is they are taking away people's salvation. But then people are giving it up. Why? Simply because they won't read. It's real simple. It's not that complicated. Turn over to Colossians, the second chapter. But people... When they take away God's commandments, all they do is substitute them with man's commandments or man's traditions. And Paul was warning the Colossians about that here. Jesus didn't come up with anything new. People don't understand that. Because if you worship God not in accordance to his commandments, but that a man, that's not going to profit you either. You might as well not be doing nothing. It's not going to benefit anybody for doing that. Listen to what Paul is saying here to the Colossians. He warns them, 2 and 18. Go ahead. 
Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels. Uh -huh. Intruding into those things which he hath not seen. Go ahead. Vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. Look here, Paul is just simply saying, don't deprive yourself of your reward. By submitting yourself to false teaching. Don't be worshiping things you shouldn't be worshiping, angels and such. Don't give them reference. You're only supposed to reference God. He said, let no man deceive you. He said, let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels and intruding in those things which he's not seen and vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. Verse number 19. Go ahead. And not holding the head. Go ahead. From which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered. You're not listening to God's doctrine. You're following man's doctrine. He said, and not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered. Go ahead. And knit together. Go ahead. Increase it with the increase of God. Uh-huh. Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world. And when he say, if ye be dead with Christ, he referenced that in another place in, in Rome. That old you, when you baptized into Christ, that old you, that old man, is submerged in the water. And it's supposed to remain there. You're supposed to come up out of that water a new creature, a new creature in Christ. He says, and wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ, if you entered into a covenant with him through baptize, baptism, he said, wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of a bad doctrine, of this world. He said, why as though living in the world are you still subject to ordinances? Why are you still allowing the world to influence you with its bad doctrine? He warns them, what? Verse 21. Touch not, taste not, handle not. That's just like what Jesus told Adam. Don't eat of that tree. Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. He said, touch not, taste not, handle not, don't deal with it. Go ahead. Which all are to perish with the use after the commandments and doctrines of men. Again, the worshiping God after the traditions and the commandments of men is going to be all for naught. It's going to be for nothing. Just as it's important to understand you got to worship God according to his commandments, you got to make sure that the commandments that you are following are that of God and not of man. Go ahead. 23. Which things have indeed a show of wisdom and up in will worship. See, they have an appearance of being pious or an appearance of being religious. For what? And humility and neglecting of the body. Go ahead. But in any honor to the satisfying of the flesh. You're not going to do anybody any good. Turn to Matthew, the 15th chapter. Jesus told us the same thing. And when I remember when I first read this, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe this was in here. But it was so much that was in here I knew nothing about. Because Jesus is letting us know, look, you got to obey me. But you got to obey me in accordance to my command. 15 and 1. 15 and 1. Because here they're going to approach Jesus because of what the Jesus' disciples was doing. 15 and 1. Go ahead when you get there. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees. Uh -huh. The 12 Jerusalem said, What? Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash now their hands when they eat bread. So they, his disciples was eating bread, and before they were eating, they weren't washing their hands. And here they are, they're concerned with man's tradition. They say, Why do the disciples, why do the disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? As if that held some weight. As if that meant something. You eating bread with dirty hands ain't got nothing to do with your salvation. It may not be the most healthiest thing to do. But it ain't got nothing to do with your salvation. You were made out of some dirt. He said, why do the disciples transgress the tradition of the elders but they wash not their hands when they eat bread? See, you don't have to come up with nothing. You have enough to do. Trust me. You got a full plate. Obeying God according to his commandments. You ain't got to introduce nothing new to the equation. 
He said, but why they, again, why do they transgress the tradition of the elders, but they washing out their hands when they eat bread? What did Jesus tell them? Go ahead. But he answered and said unto them, uh -huh. Why do ye also transgress the tradition, the commandment of God by your tradition? And the same thing applies today. When people observe Christmas and Easter, those are man traditions. Right. Sunday worship. They've done away with God's holy day. They tell you you can eat anything. Just pray over it. Now the Lord then told you certain things are an abomination to him. But then you're going to turn around and eat something that's an abomination, that's sin, and then tell the Lord to bless it? That don't make no sense. Right. None whatsoever. But go ahead. He said, why do you transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? He's going to give an example of what they've done. Go ahead. Well, God commanded, say, uh -huh. honor thy father and mother. Go ahead. And he that cursed father or mother, let him die the death. And the one that commanded, that was none other than Jesus on Mount Sinai. We read that, did we not? He said, God commanded, saying, honor your father and your mother. And the one that cursed his father or his mother, let him die the death. Go ahead. But, but what did they come up with? But he said. What? Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, uh -huh. it is a gift. By whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. So they made the commandment conditional. Uh -huh. They say, look, if you give something to your mother or your father, then you do so as, by way of gift. As a, by way of a gift. Because what that does is that absolves them of their responsibility. Right. Because a gift is freely given. So if you choose not to give or not to do right, then it's okay. He said, God commanded out of your father and your mother. He ain't said nothing about it being a gift. He said, but then you say, whosoever said to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mayest be profited by me. And verse 6, go ahead. And honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. And what has he done doing that? Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. So by man's tradition, they've done away with God's commandment. But what did the Lord say? Go ye, ahead. Ye hypocrite. Uh-huh. Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you, say? Because what did they do? This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth. Uh-huh. And honoreth me with their lips. Look, people profess the love of the Lord. They would tell you about Jesus, 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 but won't do nothing what Jesus has to say. He said, call them hypocrites. He said, well did. Isaiah prophesied you saying, this people draw nigh to me with their mouth. They're calling on the name of Jesus. He said, and honor me with their lips. He said, but their mind is far from me. And what does he say what they're doing? Go ahead. But in vain they do worship me. Go ahead. Teaching for doctrines the commandments of me. This is the only God that matters now. He said, but nothing are they doing now. Is not going to profit them in any kind of way. He said, but in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of man. This is Jesus. How much more clear can it get? And ain't nobody paying no attention to this. And why is that? Because the ministers that should be feeding the people ain't feeding the flock. They're not telling them what thus say the Lord. Because, see, they're afraid of offending somebody. What they want to do is inspire somebody. They say, we want to encourage people. If you're going to encourage somebody, encourage them with the truth. Right. And what they do with it, that's up to them. If somebody's offended by what I say, it ain't me that's offended them. I ain't made up nothing. All I'm doing is preaching the word of God. I tell everybody that. When somebody asks me something, what I was given to do was to preach this word. And that's what I do. I don't have nothing to do with the rest of it. I didn't make nothing up. I ain't came up with nothing. All I do is go in this word and what God gives me to the best of my ability, I deliver to those that are willing to hear. I ain't soliciting nobody, never have, never will. That's not my job. That was not given to me. What was given to me 
was to teach this word. Turn over to Isaiah, the 24th chapter. Because it's of no benefit to man worshiping God according to man's command. And the Lord is going to destroy this word as a result of as a result of man's disobedience. And he had Isaiah to write about it here. And this is none other than Jesus. Isaiah 24 and 1. As Paul said, Jesus Christ is saying yesterday, today, and we're going to see forever. Because this is future. This is what the Lord is going to do when he make his second come. When he said, he told you what he was going to do in Matthew the 24th chapter. I mean the 25th chapter. He was going to come and establish his kingdom. Isaiah gives you a little bit more insight as to what the Lord is going to do. 24 and 1. Go ahead. Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty. Go ahead. And maketh it waste. And turneth it upside down. Uh -huh. And scattereth abroad the inhabitants thereof. Who is this Lord that he's talking about? You know it ain't talking about the Father. It's talking about Jesus. He said he's going to make the earth empty and make it waste and turn it upside down and going to scatter abroad the inhabitants thereof. Go ahead. He's going to let you know. Ain't nobody going to escape. Go ahead. And it shall be as with the people, uh -huh. so with the priests. Go ahead. As with the servants, so with his master. As with the maid, so with her mistress. Go ahead. As with the buyer, so with the seller. As with the lender, so with the borrower. As with the taker of usury, so with the giver of usury to him. All that are doing wrong, none are going to escape. Go ahead. The land shall be utterly empty and utterly spoiled. Go ahead. For the Lord hath spoken this word. Uh -huh. The earth mourneth and fadeth away. The world languisheth and fadeth away. The Lord is going to bring this to pass, but go ahead. The haughty people of the earth do languish. Uh -huh. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof. Because they have transgressed the law. Go ahead. Changed the ordinance. Broken the everlasting cup. Look, they've done away with God's doctrine and replaced it with their own. They've done away with the commandments of God and replaced it with the commandments of man. He said the earth that defiled under the inhabitants thereof because they transgressed the laws. They've changed the ordinance and broken down the everlasting cup. Therefore what? Therefore hath the curse devour the earth. The whole word, go ahead. And they that dwell therein are desolate. Uh -huh. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burned and few men left. Turn over to 2 Thessalonians. So we're going to see who is this one that's going to be doing all this. To see clearly that Isaiah is talking about none other than Jesus. Because he said... The inhabitants are burned and few men are left. 2 Thessalonians. You pick it up at verse number 6. 2 Thessalonians. And verse 6. 1 and 6. 2 Thessalonians 1 and verse 6. You go ahead when you get there. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Go ahead. Jesus is going to pay. Go ahead. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. Uh -huh. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. Doing what? In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. That's the one that's going to destroy this world. He said, and to you who are troubled, you just rest with us. When Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. So Jesus is the one that said, Vengeance is mine, and I will repay it. Go ahead. And that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. What's going to happen to him? Go ahead. He shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. Turn back to Isaiah, the 65th chapter. Jesus, only God, man, no. And he does not change. What it took to serve him. Before is what it takes to serve him now, and that is being obedient to his command. Because we're going to see who's going to be among those that are destroyed and why. Isaiah 65, and verse number 1. 65 and 1. What did I say? 65 and 2. I'm sorry, 65 and number 2. I have 2. Sorry, go ahead. 
I have spread out my hands all the day into a rebellious people. Talking about Israel. Go ahead. Which walketh in a way that was not God. Uh -huh. After their own thoughts. Again, according to their own will. Because I'm going to say there's a way that seemeth right unto man and leadeth unto death. Right. Y'all say don't lean into your own understanding. Don't get so high and mighty. If you're going to serve God, serve him according to what's written in his word. Not what's in your mind. Not what you think. But what you know because you're reading it out of his word. Not because of what somebody's telling you. That's what I always say. Whatever I say, you make sure I give you the scriptures so you can read along. I can't make, look here. Man can't make up this story. Man can't come up with the plan of salvation for man. That's in line with God's word. You know, man come up with stuff where God loves everybody. You can read from Genesis to Revelation. From the beginning to the end, God came here doing what? Adam, you're going to obey me or die. Mm -hmm. To the nation, Israel, his chosen, you're going to obey me or you're going to die. To the angels, powerful beings, you're going to obey me or you're going to die. Right. And all of a sudden, he loves everybody. That don't make sense. Right. None whatsoever. And that's not to understand who you are serving. God is a merciful God, a loving God, compassionate, full of grace, but he's also a terrible God. Right. And it's real easy if you want for it to be well between you and God, just obey him. And as he said to Adam, of all the trees of God, you can freely eat. You don't have to worry. The ones who have to worry are the ones that decide, I'm going to serve God my way, as Isaiah's talking about here. He said, I spread out my hands all day into a rebellious people, which walking not in a way that was good, that was not good after their own thoughts. The people that did what? Verse 3. The people that provoked me to anger continually to my face. Go ahead. That sacrificed in gardens and burneth incense upon altars of brick. This false worship. Go ahead. Which, what else did they do? Which remain among the graves uh -huh. and lodge in their monuments. What he's talking about, the spirits be dead. Yes. He said they remain among the graves. He called judging in another place. And then, is he here? He calls them the dry bones in the valley. God's word was given to a people. And the people that his word was given to are spiritually dead. He said, which remain among the graves. And what else are they doing? And lodge in the monuments. These huge churches doing what? Which eat swine's flesh. Go ahead. And broth of abominable things is in their vessels. See, believing you can eat anything and just pray over it. You can't eat anything and just pray over God gave you. His dietary law. Right. And that's what you have to follow. You <laughs> know my position, and I, I, I really do, I love her. She's a great physician, a doctor. But she tried to tell me, she said, well, you know, that was, was days before. Things have changed. Now they have refrigeration and things like that, so you don't have to worry about, look here, God, who, the one who created the heavens and the earth, knew what was going to come in, in man's mind. He knew that refrigeration was going to be created when he said, don't eat the pig or the swine. That had nothing to do with no refrigeration. Right. And then some would say, well, see, the swine is like a dog. It doesn't have sweat glands, so all the poisons can't be released. I don't need to know all that. I don't need to know why a pig don't need to be eaten other than, thus say the Lord. He said, don't eat it. Don't eat these crustaceans, don't eat the lobsters, don't eat the shrimp, don't eat the catfish. Do I need to know that these are scavengers? No. God don't have to explain to me. I trust him enough. I know that when I wake up in the morning and I'm still breathing, it's because of him. I know whatever I have, I have, it's because of him. Yes. See, I knew it was a God when I was little because I know I didn't create myself. I remember the question I asked. 
I don't know why God made me me, but I'm glad he did. I was glad he created me, me. But the most important thing was I was acknowledging that there is a God. I didn't have nothing to do with my creation. I didn't have nothing to do with my son's creation. Nothing whatsoever. All I was praying for, let him be healthy. Just let him be healthy. He came here and I was counting. His finger said five, five fingers. I see ten fingers. I see ten toes. Now I gotta wait to see how he gonna be. If his mind gonna be right, but other than that, that's all you can hope for. I ain't nothing to do. See, if I had created him, I'd have messed it up. I couldn't conceive what God had conceived. That's beyond me. So I trust him. I don't have to know why. Once I find out what he wants me to do, then I try to the best of my ability to do that. He said, but you got those that remain among the graves and lives and the monuments, eating swine's flesh and broth of abominable things is in their vessels. Which say what? Which say, stand by thyself. Go ahead. Come not near to me. Not saying that I don't want to hear about God. What are they saying? I am holier than that. They think they know the Lord. Talking about they holy. But then they're defiling themselves with all these abominable things. Not being obedient unto his command. Oh, the Lord. They're professing the Lord with their lips. But their heart is far from him. He said, they say, they say stand by thyself. Come not near to me. For I am holier than thou. What did the Lord say? Go ahead. These are a smoke in my nose. Ah. A fire that burneth all the day. Look, they're like an irritant unto me. He said, these are a smoke in my nose. He said, a fire that burneth all the day. Go ahead. Behold, it is written before me. What's going to happen? I will not keep sight. Uh -huh. But will recompense. He said, well, I'm going to pay. Go ahead. Even recompense unto their bosom. He said, I'm going to reward according to their works. I'm going to. Reward them according, again, to their doom. Go ahead. Sir, your iniquities and the iniquities of your fathers together, uh -huh. saith the Lord, which have burned incense upon the mountains. Go ahead. And blasphemed me upon the hill. What is he going to do? Therefore will I measure their former work into their bosom. He said, I'm going to punish them for their disobedience. And this is none other than Jesus. Go right to the 66th chapter of Isaiah. Because the Lord is going to destroy him. 66. And verse 13. 66 and 13. Because Paul said that the Lord Jesus is coming back in flame and fire, taking vengeance on those who obey not the gospel. Isaiah wrote about 66 and 13. Go ahead. As one whom his mother comforted, uh -huh. so will I comfort you. When? And you shall be comforted in Jerusalem. That's upon his return. Uh -huh. Go ahead. And when ye see this, uh -huh. your heart shall rejoice. Go ahead. And your bones shall flourish like an earth. Uh -huh. And the hand of the Lord shall be known toward his servants. Uh -huh. And his indignation toward his enemies. And it's real easy to know when you're a servant of the Lord. Because Paul said in Romans, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourself service to obey, his servants ye are. To whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness. So if you are a servant of sin, then you belong unto Satan. But if you are a servant of righteousness, which comes through your obedience, then you belong unto the Lord. He said, When you see this, your heart shall rejoice, and your bones shall flourish like an herb, and the hand of the Lord shall be known toward his servants, and his indignation towards his end. 15. Go ahead. For the hope. The Lord will come with fire. We know this is Jesus. Go ahead. And with his chariots like a whirlwind. To do what? To render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. And what's going to happen? Well, by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. Go ahead. And the slain of the Lord shall be made. See, the Lord don't love everybody. He does not change. It's real simple. He said, the Lord, he said, by fire and by sword will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain and the Lord shall be men. Go ahead. Who's going to be among those that are slain? Go ahead. They that sanctify themselves. Go ahead. And purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst. He took us all the way back to the beginning. Right. All the way, all the way back 
to Adam. Those that set themselves apart and purify themselves, not according to God's word, not according to his doctrine, not according to his command. See, that's how you set apart. What separates you from those in the world is not you going off in a corner somewhere saying we're going to be by ourselves. God ain't never told nobody to do that. He told you that in John, talking about pray to the Father, take them not out of the world, but keep them from the evil. What separates you from others is your obedience to God's commandments. That's how he knows if you belong to him or not. That's how he knows if you are one of his sheep. Because you follow him. He said, but these, they've sanctified themselves and purified themselves in the guards behind one tree in the midst. Doing what? Eating swine's flesh. Uh -huh. And the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. Turn over to Isaiah 56 chapter. It's Jesus destroying man when he returns for the same reason. Adam died because of their refusal to be obedient. Isaiah 56. And when he established the Sabbath, was it when he came down on Mount Sinai? Was it not when he finished the creation? And he had ceased from all of his work. And he rested on the seventh day. And he blessed that day. And he sanctified that day. And we're going to see. And it's still good. Isaiah 56 and verse number 1. 56 and 1. Go ahead when you get there. Thus saith the Lord, keep ye judgment and do justice. Uh -huh. For my salvation is near to come. It's coming. Go ahead. And my righteousness is to be revealed. And we know this is none other than Jesus. He said, thus saith the Lord, you keep judgment and do righteous. He said, for my deliverance, my salvation is near to come. And my righteousness will be revealed. Go ahead. Blessed is the man that doeth this. And what? And the son of man that layeth hold on it. Who's going to be blessed? Go ahead. And what is it that he has to do? That keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it. Uh-huh. And keepeth his hand from doing any evil. See, it's not enough just to say I'm going to attend a holy convocation. He said, blessed is the man that do this and the man, the son of man that laid hold on this. He said, they keep the Sabbath from defiling it and keeps his hand from doing any evil, any wrong. Go ahead. Neither let the son of the stranger Go ahead. that hath joined himself to the Lord speak, say. Because his word was given to Israel, but it's one law for everybody. Right. Go ahead. The Lord hath utterly separated me from his people. Uh -huh. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a tribe. Because the Lord ain't separated nobody. Right. Go ahead. For God is not a respect to a person. Go ahead. For thus saith the Lord unto the eunuchs that keep my sight. Go ahead. And choose the things that please me. And take hold of my cup. Notice what it said. It said, but thus saith the Lord unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbath. And choose the things that please me and hold fast of my covenant. The covenant he's talking about is the one that he made with Abraham. Uh -huh. But he said, walk before me, Abraham, and be thy perfect. And I establish my covenant with thee and thy seed after thee. For an everlasting covenant. And the promise was the land of Canaan. That's why it's called the promised land. And who is this talking? This is none other than Jesus. Talking about what's going to take place when he returns. Because he said, my salvation is near. He said, so to the eunuch that keep my Sabbaths and choose the things that please me and take hold of my covenant is not just, again, observing the Sabbath is not just observing the dietary law, all of God's commandments. He said, even unto them, what is he going to do? Bye. Even unto them will I give in mine house and within my walls a place and a name better than of sons and of daughters. Go ahead. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Go ahead. Also the sons of the stranger that join themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord, to be his servants. Everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taketh hold of my cup. What law for everybody? What is he going to do? Go ahead. Even then will I bring to my holy mountain. That's going to be here on this earth. God is going to be headquartered in Jerusalem. Yes. 
He said, even them will I bring to my holy mountain and do what? And make them joyful in my house of prayer. Uh -huh. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar. Go ahead. For mine house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Again, the Lord is telling you what he's going to do. Future. God does not change. Right. Tells you in another great the Sabbath is a sign between God and his people. Right. Turn over to Micah. And this is it. Micah 3. Malachi. Thank you. Malachi. And we're going to be reminded of what it is that we must remember concerning the Lord. We're going to read one verse. And Jesus is going to tell us something about himself. And what is that? Three and six. For I am the Lord. And who is this? You know we're talking about Jesus. He said, for I am the Lord, therefore what? I change not. God does not change. He said, for I am the Lord. He said, I change not, therefore what? Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Again, he made a promise unto Abraham, and that promise must be fulfilled. He said, for I am the Lord, I change not, therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. And that's Jesus Christ is saying, yesterday, today, and forever, I want to thank you for your time. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to stand up. We're going to thank Jerusalem and close out. Our Father which art in heaven. Our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth. Thy will be done in earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he is good. For he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. For his mercy and do us better. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. For he is good. For he is good. And his mercy and do us well. And his mercy and do us well. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. King of kings. The King of kings. Lord of lords. The Lord of lords. Our Savior. Our Savior. Our Redeemer. Our Redeemer. The Alpha and Omega. The Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. The beginning and the end. First and the last. The first and the last. Amen. Amen.